and a few other fun things. Today, I am in Folkestone, Georgia, where it is warm and sunny. I thought I should talk about some of the thought processes that went into the decision to get this kiln. I was inspired by a woman on our Clay Buddies page who also travels in an RV regularly, and she carries her pottery equipment in the back of her Jeep, including a small kiln that she plugs in to the pole at the campground. So I began to research the electrical needs of a kiln and compare those to the electrical needs of a campground and try to figure out if I could make this work. What I learned was that campgrounds only run one hot wire up a 30 amp pole, but they run two up a 50 amp pole, and that kilns need two hot wires. So I knew I could plug in my kiln to a 50 amp campground pole. Next, I searched for a kiln that would be small enough to be movable and would have enough insulation to run outside with no building to help moderate the air around it. I selected a small cone art kiln. It has two layers of brick, the regular fire brick that kilns are made out of and then a layer of hard brick around that. Then it has its steel wrap and it has a steel wrap across the bottom. The other reason that I chose this kiln was that it was available now. I had called, they had it in stock, and they could ship it immediately, taking a couple of weeks to get to my daughter's house. The wait time for a ordered kiln was somewhere in the neighborhood of six months or more. We built a small cart with locking wheels and have strapped it firmly to that cart. This renders it one complete unit, so it doesn't have to be managed in separate parts. The base is painted with a heat resistant uh, spray paint like you might use on your grill as extra protection. However, I have monitored that temperature on the bottom of the kiln and it rarely hits 200 degrees. The top of the kiln gets much, much hotter, but the bottom actually stays fairly cool. When I fire this, I unplug the camper and plug this in. The camper has enough solar and battery that we can easily go 24 hours without any electricity from the pole. We got this opportunity because we had paid a donation to Toys for Tots for the opportunity to drive our truck around the track. However, the weather did not cooperate. So when they were calling to let people know it had been postponed, we said, oh, that's too bad. We won't be here. You can keep the donation. The man on the other end of the phone said, wait a minute, I'll get back to you in a few minutes. And when he called, he said he had arranged this for as soon as we could get there. And since we were so close, it happened right away. We both got to go around the track three times in the pace car, not on the top lane. But it was amazing and cool and not something I would have ever looked for to do it was fun. This video is only one time around the track. It's a two and a half mile track and takes quite a while to get all the way around.
This machine is called a pug mill. I use it to turn my clay from trimmings or ruined pots back into usable clay so I can use it again. I am often very thankful to have this. It's hard to use, but it is so much easier than hand processing clay. After Huntsville, we moved out into the middle of nowhere. This little tiny campground was called Two Horse Wagon and it piqued Mike's interest. So we called up and got a spot and moved in for a week. We were only here for a week. We would probably enjoy spending longer, but we weren't sure, so that was all we scheduled. During the late summer or early fall, I reopened my Etsy account. And nothing happened right away, not surprising. But as we got closer to Christmas, I started getting orders for manatee spoon rest and Irish wolfhound mugs. I also got a couple of commissions for regular mugs and for some decorated mugs. And that's just the kind of thing I enjoy doing a lot. I found myself really missing Christmas activities and Christmas spirits and family times and wanting to just go on a drive and look at lights, but that's really hard to do now. So as I was looking for light displays, we came across this one on Jekyll Island. They turn their whole island into a light show and it is amazing. We drove down late one afternoon to see some of the sights in daylight. Didn't spend much time on the beach, it was pretty cold out, but we so enjoyed the light show. The official sea turtle rehabilitation site is on Jekyll Island and they are open for tours. When we left Two Horse Wagon, we moved to Beaver Run Campground. It's a lovely campground under tall, tall pine trees. We spent the rest of the month and all of New Year's and Christmas there. Lots of adventures on our weekends and evenings while we were there. I continued to get new orders and so I continued working. I ran my kiln a couple of times while we were in that campground. I decided that I needed to know how all of my glazes were going to fire in this new kiln. So I made a bunch of test tiles and I bisque fired them and then I started glazing. One glaze per tile. But I carefully labeled each of the tiles so I would know exactly which glaze it was and who made it. I was so excited to see how they would turn out when I opened the gown. Turns out I had a charcoal pencil mixed up with my underglaze pencils and all of my labels burned off during the firing. So now, I can only identify positively a few of them. The rest will need to be re-test fired. When it's time for us to pack up and move, I very carefully pack my shelves into my kiln. Use a layer of bubble wrap and cardboard to shield the elements and bubble wrap and cardboard between each of the shelves and they travel snug in my kiln which is padded from the walls with pieces of cardboard and then it is strapped in place with a ratchet strap so that I know it's not going to go anywhere while we're traveling. Our next site took us down closer to the coast 
We spent a week or so there in that beautiful campground on the lake. Mike didn't like it. It had really nasty corners to get out of. I really enjoyed the weather while we were there as it was warm enough to work outside in the sun and not be too hot. Our next stop was a week, three blocks from the beach on Tybee Island. We enjoyed that week, but it was cold, so we didn't spend a lot of beach time. But it was a delightful place to be. The campground was lovely, and who could beat the scenery? We found we really enjoyed watching the ships go by, and they went pretty close by. This was also where we went to visit Savannah. When I had been researching light shows to go see, I found that there were two in Atlanta that interested me. And I remembered that there was a whale shark at their aquarium. And I really, really wanted to see it. So we checked the dates on things and bought tickets before we had a campsite near Atlanta and planned to move there. I cannot describe how awesome I found the aquarium. If you are in the Atlanta area and you love sea life, I would highly recommend a visit here. Other places we found things to do were at the Atlanta Botanical Gardens where they had a truly amazing light show and at the zoo where they were having a Chinese lantern festival. These were all glorious things that only happened at night and you needed tickets early to get in. But we certainly enjoyed them. After leaving Atlanta we headed south to camp near the Okefenokee Swamp. We have enjoyed it, and that'll be in my next video. Happy travels.